down. It's your boy Carcino here. And I turn this on. Oh. Okay, there we go. Now, let's talk about a few things. Um, Stephen A. Smith. By the way, I am enjoying myself. Whenever I come home, I enjoy myself when I come home. And for the record, I'm making videos in my mama's house. <laughs> now, let's go talk about Stephen A. Smith. Because I had the same discussion with my mother, who had the same views as Stephen A. Smith about blacks and voting. Now, Stephen A. Smith went out his way and it was so phony and fake, you know, to blast Colin Kaepernick because Colin Kaepernick exercised his right to not vote. And my mom right away comes out with People have died for us to have this right to vote. It's our duty to go out and vote because people died for us to have the right to vote. And I told her people died and gave their lives for us to have the choice, the option. When you tell somebody they have to do something, that's an ultimatum. That's not a choice. You saying you got to pick between this person and this person. What if you don't like either one of them? The choice is pick one or don't. That's a choice. So people die for us to have the choice. We couldn't vote. So... At one point, it's like, look, if we wanted to vote for a guy that we liked, we couldn't. That's what they died for. For us to have the same rights as everybody else. They have the right not to vote. It doesn't mean just every, because it's every election, we need to go run out and vote. If we don't feel like voting, we don't vote. We don't like the candidates, we don't vote. As simple as that. That's all to it. So Colin Kaepernick just exercised his right to not vote. He didn't like either candidate. I don't have a problem with that. But Stephen A. Smith said, I need to get political because FS1 and Undisputed, Shannon Sharp is beating me up being political over there. So... I need to get over there and be as political as possible as far as I can take it. So now I need to bash Colin Kaepernick because everybody else is doing it. When we were talking about Colin Kaepernick back when all this stuff was happening, we was telling it to you straight from the gut. This is what it is. But, you know, we get it. It's ratings. Ratings. Ratings are down. You got to do whatever you can, right? Get some of them right-wing people back. <laughs> so, but that's how it is. My mom, she takes politics personal. You shouldn't. As you can see today, Obama and them, they laughing it up with Trump. He didn't insulted this man's heritage. He's insulted his citizenship, everything. But they are in there laughing and joking in the White House. Why? Because nobody takes politics personal except for the people that run out and vote. You guys take it personal. Right? Remember every time they get these celebrities to go lead people to vote? Come on, let's go vote! Yeah! Rock the vote! Vote or die! What happened? Y'all all end up with egg on your face. And all these celebrities, I'm moving to Canada. I'm moving to Africa like Nas and them finna do. Bye. Bye-bye.
<laughs> now watching all this die down, you go mosey on back to your your uh, Maybach. <laughs> <laughs> going doing shows in the states where Trump is the president. Did I vote? Absolutely not. I would not vote for Hillary Clinton, and I definitely wouldn't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> so, this was not my election. <laughs> so, uh, I had no say and what the determination of who was going to be president. My state I already knew was going to go for Hillary Clinton. It's a Democratic state. There's no way that Illinois wasn't going to support a Democrat. So what point do I need in voting? So Stephen A. Smith, knowing these are the facts, because this is the truth. How do you feel now? Why didn't you explain that process? Why do you feel the need to bash this guy? When Colin Kaepernick's stance had nothing to do with voting in the first place. And he stated then, before the election even took place, weeks ago, that he was not voting. Weeks ago. Probably even a month ago when he said... It's the, like, the lesser of two evils. Like, who am I supposed to pick the lesser of two evils is still evil. So, who am I voting for? What candidate do you feel embodied what he represented? Hmm? He was supposed to... So, what you're saying is he was supposed to come out and vote for Hillary Clinton. Because Donald Trump wasn't going to support his... Which, what are you saying? I don't understand. He was just supposed to vote, period. Is Pat Buchanan back on the ballot? I mean, what, what was he supposed to be doing? I don't get it. I mean, many of us is probably out here scratching our heads wondering what exactly was he supposed to do that he didn't do? Just go out and vote? Be proud of the, of the process? The electoral process, even though he doesn't care for any candidate. Isn't that what we're telling people not to do? Focus on the issues and pick the candidate that you think is best representative of that. And if you don't think that they are, you don't have to vote for them. If that was the case, we would, it would be mandatory that every U.S. citizen votes. It's not mandatory. You know why? Because it's a choice. <clears throat> and what you're doing is removing. You're removing choice out of the equation. So did anybody in your family tell y'all the same thing they told me? Because my mom sat right here at this dinner table and told me yesterday. That we all supposed to vote because people die for us to have the right to vote. A lot of people die for us to have rights as human beings. It's an option as to what you want to do. For us to have that option. We had no options back then. It was you ain't voting. Period. And we wanted the option to put who we think represented our claims and our views and our issues in there. We wanted the right to. Now that we have the right to vote, we exercise that the same way. We look, we listen to views, supposed to. We're not just saying, oh, what are we doing? Who the Democrat? All right, we Democrat. Let's go. Because when elections, when we were voting and allowed to vote at certain points in time, we were all voting Republicans. Then it all switched. But everybody used to vote Republican, especially on the East Coast during the Prohibitionary period. All the blacks used to run out and vote Republican because the, the Republicans would let the blacks vote. So 
A lot of things you didn't know about history, did you? And there was one incident that happened, and all of a sudden, everybody started going over to the Democratic side. Then, I don't know what happened where Democrats represent the blacks and Republicans represent whites, and that's how it all went. So, you're programmed to think that, too. Like, Democrat, black, Republicans, oh, that's for white folks. So it keeps you in a bubble of not even listening to issues. You're just following a system that's been put in place for you to follow. But I don't trust politicians to do work for me. I don't trust these guys to make decisions that's going to affect the course of my life because they don't. <laughs> I have never went there and said, this politician, we need to get this done. We need to get that done. Every time you've done that, what have you ended up with? A bag of sand in your hand. They haven't done anything for you. I can't name anybody that's got something done as a politician that the people agreed on and they love and said, this man is great. He's doing what he needs to do. We're going to get him all the way up that ladder and boom. Do you realize him going up that ladder is making it worse for him? At the lower levels, you can get stuff done. When you get to the higher levels, you're controlled by the people with power that's going to say, I'm not going to allow that to go because you don't need my vote. You're going to need my permission to get it done. They might want to and they're hard to get it done, but they're going to say it's not in the budget. We can't get it done. There's no money. You can't raise the money. And they can't cut here. We got to cut programs over here. It's so much red tape that's in the way of getting stuff done to it all ends up being talk. As you saw Obama try to get things done and you see what happened there, right? Then all those little committee hearings that they have where people can go in there and fight and veto stuff, y'all don't show up for. All the awareness hearings that they have in DC that's open for the public. Y'all don't show up. Go and learn about all of the open hearings that the public can go in and be a part of. Go ahead. Go and see how many different open discussions that di that dictates the course of your life in your own community and outside of your community. If you're in D.C., go in there and see how many meetings you can go to inside the White House and listen to and actually be a part of. Go be a part of your community. That's what you do. Police yourselves. Get involved in your own community, in your own neighborhood. As much as you're concerned about what's happening way over somewhere else, turn around, look at your own community, get involved. Then guess what? Things might start to get better. But we don't want to do that. It ain't what Rihanna doing. <laughs> it ain't what T.I. doing. It ain't what... Uh, he ain't even celebrity that uh, Meek Mill got, but it ain't what he's doing. So we're going to do what those idiots are doing. Which is a whole lot of talking and a whole lot of nothing following behind. Anyway, I hope this was long enough for y'all attention. <laughs> I'm out.